there it is. Because I'm such a professional. I forgot to even load the game before I started the stream. So, okay. Figure I'm in a nice scenic location right here. Might as well just do it in the crate. So now I think this is perfect. So I've got a high G planet there. We'll come to that later. Uh, nice little like normal G planet. We'll use this for, uh, we'll use this outer one for initial approaches. How many G's is this one? Did I not scan that one? I don't think I scanned that one. Okay. Uh, we're gonna start on this one. And I'm gonna do this both flight assist on and off because it doesn't do, you know, anyone any good if they're flying flight assist off, or excuse me, flight assist on, which, you know, I'd say most people do. And I'm just gonna pull this guy up because I'm super lazy and haven't made a nice overlay. <laughs> but that's just the, uh, the X-52 uh, controls layout there. And yeah, it's like a nice looking place. So we'll be coming back to this rock later. Where is it? Hello? That one? We'll be coming back to that later. Do some higher G stuff. But we're going to start with some low G and mainly just like approach mistakes that I see people make. This is, this is mainly... Um, oh, we got a new... You squadron member. Sweet. These are just like some real basic uh, mistakes that I see people making, either because they don't understand like the instrumentation, or they don't understand um, what to do to like fix the situation. Uh, where is my mouse at? Hello. Uh, my head looks not working. How do I plan it on a landing? What? It's simple. You go there and you do. What the heck? All right. Well, my head looks not working in the normal way because this mouse button is not. You can see it clicking there. It's not working. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I need to make a more refined one. I basically just need to take uh, all that data and make it look pretty. <laughs> But I've been lazy and I haven't done it, so it's literally just the Windows properties for the X-52. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. And for some reason, my mouse click button. I'm a doobly. Hold on. Sometimes this fixes it. Do a little unplug plug in. Ah, there we go. Got it fixed. I can do my head look. And because I did that, let's go to properties. And then I need to reset this. Uh, I need to go, uh, where's this? Now I grabbed the wrong thing. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, I like the one that you did, Bernard. I, I really like the one that you did. Uh, window title must match. Boom. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Instead of just like grabbing the same type of window, it's got to be the exact, the exact match. Um. But yeah, this is uh good enough for what we're doing. So first thing, I'm just going to try to go from like super cruise down to the planet. Yeah, well the thing is it does, uh, the X-52 itself has software, this is like the Windows properties of it, the X-52 has its own software, and Bayes did something with it to make the X and Y axis like respond to a mouse, so you could use the relative mouse curves in game I need to figure that out but I don't know if I want to do it oh for no board oh yeah yeah because yeah. I mean it's just you know it's grabbing keyboard stuff it's not really grabbing joystick stuff 
Alright, so the first thing I see people doing is this. <laughs> they get going too fast. And then they just run into the orbital cruise. Which I actually missed. <laughs> I was actually meaning to hit that, but that's fine. You get the idea. This is like real basic stuff. So now let's say I'm going too fast. But I'm only going a little fast. I can just kind of like... Okay, it sees, it's still see, showing slow down. I just like... Do this and turn in orbit. And wait till you slow down. And there you go. Just kind of like abort your approach. If you're just a little bit fast and you still see that red slow down. Above your Dratus. And by the Dratus I mean the little radar thing. That's all you gotta do. Just turn and like start orbiting it, and the ship will decelerate. I see so many people just like ram into the the blue line for the orbital cruise without you know doing a quick orbit. So now we're in orbital flight, and one of the next things I see people doing is they get going real fast. And I think I can try to simulate here. I gotta pick up some speed. Oh, also, you pick up the most speed when you're sitting at the zero. That's another orbital mechanic. So I'm using my instruments here to keep my pitch at zero and see how I go a lot faster like this. And if you notice on the right-hand side, my vertical speed of the indicator is turned red. If I don't pull up, I'm going to have an emergency stop because it's red. So there you go. That's the next thing that people don't do. you got to watch vertical speed indicator and I need a little bit of I need an arrow doing this on the fly I didn't think to do this thank you Google images <laughs> uh, let's see view image is it a transparency or is it not this one's a transparency image I'm gonna save that <laughs> and it's gonna go right there and then I'm gonna add a image capture <laughs> this is like pro streamer stuff here adding things on the fly but I need I need this to demonstrate things because I don't have like a laser pointer if I could have like a little laser pointer that'd be perfect boom oh yeah oh yeah there we go whoop whoop so this guy right here, that's a vertical speed indicator. If it's in the red, you can have an emergency stop. So like right here, it's all it's all orange. Down here, it's it's red. If it goes into that, and you're about to drop, either you know from uh, from orbital cruise to glide, you're gonna be too fast. So let's see how to avoid that. Now it's going to move around a little bit, but you get the idea. It's, it's right there. Oh boy, did the thing again. Where's my, where's my mouse? I think when the uh, Hodas properties are up, my head look doesn't work that way, so I have to do it like this. Let's do it like that. Alright, so I'm going to gain some altitude and do the same thing and show you how not to do it. And because the screen moves around, that arrow's not going to be in the exact right spot, but you get the idea. Alright, so let's come back around. I went a little bit higher than I needed to. I'm going to try to do it on the light side. 
can see a little better. See how that's uh, the vertical speed indicator is orange now? It's just I don't I don't know what the units are for it, but it's basically telling you how fast you're going up or down. But I forget the units for it, <laughs> or I haven't looked them up. Okay, so I'm going to get myself going nice and fast. Nice and fast. And now I'm like coming down. Okay, my vertical speed indicator is just not quite in the red, and basically all I'm doing is pulling up to prevent it from going into the red. So I can get it going just fast enough, and you see now that the vertical speed indicator wasn't in the red that time. You can see now, like for the glide, it just sits in the red because you're going down so fast. Um, next thing is stretching a glide. So you can pitch all the way up to about minus six degrees and you can hold that and you'll glide. So if you drop out a little short, just pull up and stretch your glide and you can cover a lot more distance over the ground without having to reset to orbital cruise. It could maybe save you time. If you're like way too far out from your destination, it might not, but that's the way it can save you time. But as soon as you pitch to negative five, glide aborts. So that's what you don't want to do. Just keep it like, just keep it like minus six or lower, typically. So there you go. Um, I think that's the basics for the glide setup. Trying to think if there's one more thing. I'm like super not prepared for this. I'm just doing this from like right off the dome from memory. Um, but yeah, I'll do one more, one more demo, something else. Get back up here. Oh, I know what it is. Check this out. You see how we're still below the drop point? Let's see if I can turn around. See, I can't turn around and make it back down because we're still below the drop point on the altimeter. And I'll point that out. That's like over here. Here's your altimeter. See how we're at like 30 kilometers? Well, when you're in super cruise, there's a little uh, notation little altitude bug where it says DRP and that's the point at which you're going to drop from super cruise into glide. So I'll go back down to the surface a little bit and then I'll come back up and you'll be able to see that a little better or see it again I should say. So that's another thing. I've seen people when they go to reset you know they have a, an aborted glide or they come out way too short and they got to reset to super cruise. Don't take note of that and try to turn around and come back a little too early. Or you can do like this, and this is the other thing. This is if you're coming down too fast. <laughs> and you're trying to boost up, but you're still falling. <laughs> you need to be flat. That's another thing. That's another mistake. All right, now we're now we're moving up. Now I can pitch up to get my escape <laughs> after I get on mass locked. So that was that was another thing I was going to demonstrate. <laughs> when approaching a planet, you don't want to come down ass first because <laughs> that's generally bad. <laughs> and your uh, the thrusters on the underside of your ship are the best things for gaining altitude. Um, now you can see it says DRP, we're gaining altitude, we're up to 30 kilometers now, and now we're like just past the drop point, so I can pitch over, or do like this, and you see now it looks like a normal, where before the attitude indicator was all red on top, so like right now we got the nice blue up here, and if you're below the drop point, all this in the negative will be red. It's basically telling you, hey, you can't pitch there, otherwise we're going to drop you out of Super Cruise. So now I should be able to 
<laughs> I needed I knew I needed something because like I talk about stuff on the screen and without pointing it out people might not get what I'm talking about so I'll just come out for a another normal drop and I'll show you the other thing actually be uh, like the other way you can abort your glide you pitch down too far you go into the red here that'll also fail your glide but you might want to do that on purpose if say you want to drop out at a higher altitude all right so the other thing I demonstrated was if you're going down how much your your forward thrusters don't do jack so I'm gonna just demonstrate that again if you're going down really fast if you're not going down that fast, you can see I can still gain altitude. But in the last <laughs> in the last instance, I was going down really fast. And it was actually more uh is better to use my the thrusters on the bottom of my ship. So I tell people on high G's, keep it level. Just like that. And use your vertical thrusters. And so I have my ver all my thrusters on a hat, the uh, the throttle hat, so I can do that. But I also I has an axis, so I have a little dial on the Y rotation here. Also does that's uh, thrust down, that's thrust up. And in the middle, there's a little bit of a dead zone to help from overlapping or drifting. And I've done this thing where it's like I've reached my hand forward and accidentally pushed it all the way. <laughs> And so I'll start flying out of a station and I'll be thrusting up and I'll be like, what's going on? And I gotta just kind of reset it. There's a little indent on the throttle on mine. And the reason I have a an analog axis bound is because it's a little it's a lot more precise than using the hat. The hat is that's hundred percent up, that's hundred percent down, hundred percent left, hundred percent right. So it doesn't offer much precise control and on high G worlds that can bite you, but I'll show a couple different uh, techniques. So now I need to slow down because I'm above my speed cap. Okay, now I'm slowing down. It's actually doing some mild speed bowl in there <laughs> to get down to the surface. Um, and then I think pretty much, that's pretty much it for low Gs. You know, you just do your thing, come to stop, keep your ship level. Um, the speed cap I was talking about, that's more of like a, a speed bull thing when your flight assist off and you start kind of drifting down. Um, you end up going faster than your ship's speed limit, like normal speed limit. You got to kind of get below that to start getting more normal control. Um, and so thrusting up will help you um, help you do that get you slowed down, like start gaining altitude. Um, so I think that's mostly it for like normal low Gs. This is only a quarter G, so not much here. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll go and show techniques for approaching a higher G planet. This will be a 3G, so not super duper high. Um, but enough where you know, I've seen people come in and if I end up making my Distant Worlds music video, I got a clip of a, a crate phantom pancaking on on uh, at the view, which is around three Gs as well. Um, luckily, they had enough shields and hull <laughs> where I was just able to repair them. They got down to like fifty three percent, so they got lucky. Uh, but if you're in a really paper thin exploration ship, which I don't recommend. Um, then you might not be as lucky. I'm going to take the arrow out for now. Let's say goodbye to the arrow for a second. Um, so I believe this system is a nice 3G planet. Right, meow. So we're going to go and see if we can't make some mistakes over there. Um, so I guess the first thing I'll demonstrate is just kind of speed bowling. And then um, do a flight assist off landing so I can kind of show you um, how I trim my ship with my uh, 
vertical thrust axis. Actually, that is the Y rotation when it goes down. That's actually full up thrust. It's backwards, actually. I just noticed that. So that's, that's up thrust right there when the Y, y rotation goes to nothing. Very weird. I must have had it inverted for some reason. I think it's because it's, uh, it makes more sense to me that way to go counterclockwise for up. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we'll get headed out there. And then the second thing I'll show is a good safe way to do it while your flight assist on for all the people who fly flight assist on. And that's basically um, flight assist off toggling. Now I had to coach Scorb on stream uh, how to do this. And basically it's good for those that don't have a analog thrust axis like this Y rotation that I have. It's like I can just dial it in and do you know just the right amount of thrust to counteract gravity and then dial it down a little bit and then um, I can point this out too like right there that's the that's the one I'm talking about right there I can put just enough vertical thrust in to counteract gravity and then when I want to descend is take a little bit out and then it'll start to descend and it's way more stable doing that versus if you're on a, a high G planet and you go boop with your thruster hat. <laughs> with this guy right here, I just go boop down like that. You better just tap it. That's a full burst of 100% down thrust. And the thing's just going to go boom and start dropping like a rock even with the fly assist on. So um, you want to avoid doing that. And you avoid doing that by toggling fly assist off and then back on. So you toggle it off, let gravity do its work, and pull you down. And then toggle fly assist on, and that will uh, allow fly assist to correct your descent and stop you from descending. Now, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people, even big streamers, say that to land on a high planet, you want to face up. You know, point your point your ship at the sky and use your use your you know your rear thrusters or your ship to slow you down and come and ask first like SpaceX does. And I just showed it earlier in the stream when I was <laughs> dropping like a rock. Um, I wasn't slowing down very much with those uh, those normal thrusters. And until I put my ship level and started boosting and thrusting up, that's when I arrested my descent. Otherwise, I was gonna smack the ground like hard. So when you're approaching a high-G planet, you just want to keep your ship level with the horizon. That's, that's the main thing. That's going to keep you safe. You want to turn with yaw. Another mistake I see people make is they, they roll their ship to turn. And what that does is it uh, takes the vector of your uh, vertical thrust and it turns it sideways. So if you're at a 45 degree angle, you, get part of your you only got part of your thrust going um, vertical and part of your thrust going horizontal and that's kind of how, how it works with airplanes if you uh, bank a plane the uh, resulting lift vector if you don't increase the total amount of lift being created um, you don't have enough lift going in the the up direction to maintain your altitude so that's a that's like a real life application to that it's a similar thing well we're not generating lift with these ships because we don't have atmosphere to generate lift. We're generating vertical thrust. And when you're in flight assist, the flight assist is doing that for you. And when you turn your ship, you know, it's like roll your ship. Uh, your thrusters can't quite keep up most of the time, depending on your thrusters, depending on the ship. Uh, this ship has got a rated, you know, dirty drag thrusters, but it's also weighed down by armor. Um, so it's not the not the highest thrust to weight ratio. And you can see my normal approach to planet, you just do like a nice casual approach, come in at an angle, let yourself slow down. Uh, my vertical speed's sitting real nice, nice in the yellow. That's good. I like that. And I'll just go um, right over here. Looks like a nice flat area with a nice view. And I'll just. You know, some people are like, oh, it's all about the, the pitch angle. 
Nope, it's all about the vertical speed. But, see I pitch up, vertical speed goes down. So now I'm not gaining or losing altitude, or I'm gaining or losing very little altitude, I should say. And then pitch down, and vertical speed starts to increase. So all you gotta do is keep that in the yellow, and you're good. Oof, that's uh, that's a lot of packet loss, ravioli. That's 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 a little cray. Are you having ISP issues? That's that's not good. So I'm just doing a nice casual approach. This is pretty. Uh, not the strongest G planet. I've landed on strong G flight assist off, so it's you know perfectly doable to do all this. But I'm just taking it nice and easy, and then I can move my arrow back over because we're going to be watching this. We're going to be watching this. Those are the two main main instruments. Dude, the same thing happened to Bog. There was a uh, a line that was broke. I think it was an underground that was broke, and that was causing like. 600 or 1,000 people to have, be having connection issues. And they finally had a technician come out and repair it. So, yeah, that, I, that's most likely the problem, yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> they don't want to come see you. Uh, highest G1 would be strong G that's 9 point something, and I've done that flight assist off. It's tricky. There's a lot of, lot to, uh, to manage, but... Uh, this one was here, it's 3.2, which is just the system I happened to be in from activities the last time I was on this account. This is my alt account. So I'm like, why bother traveling somewhere? I got everything I need here, and it's uh, like a, a nice view. You got some nice pink rings here, pink-white rings. So it's like, why bother going someplace else? So I'm just taking a nice leisurely stroll on my way down to this planet. That's what I recommend if you don't have a lot of high-G experience. Yeah, that's and that's and that's uh, exactly what I was gonna showcase here. I was gonna showcase just how I do it flight assist off, and then I was gonna show the flight assist off toggle trick for those that use flight assist on. Yeah, dude, we should do Akinar. I'll, I'll come with you. I haven't uh, I haven't been to Akinar in a while. Yeah, I think Akinar's around six, something like that. So. Place this off here, and as you can see, I'll just pitch level here, and I'm just letting gravity do the work. See, I am I am losing altitude. I have to arrest this descent, so I'm gonna thrust up, and it's not still not still not gonna slow me down in time. So I got a boost, and that boost is gonna get diverted into my thrusters, and that arrested my descent. So I'm still holding full up thruster, and. Now what I want to do is I want to slow down because I want to land. So I need to slow down my forward speed. And I'm going to have to actually climb a little bit because now I'm in speed bowling range. I have passed my speed cap. So I need to do a little bit of climbing. See now how I started to slow down as I started to climb. You can see, hold on. Let me, uh, there's altimeter. And see now I'm descending because I let go of the thrust to do that. <laughs> now I'm descending. i got to boost again. And that's going to be a big boot. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I click off screen to go reset something and everything goes to shit. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to show you how I do the... Uh, uh, what I call the trim action. So I'm using the Y rotation. Now I can click off screen because this should stay... there. Nope, still did it. <laughs> God dang it. There's got to be a better way to move that arrow. <laughs> Alright, I got it arrested this time. Yeah, having good good stout thrusters is good. So now what I'm going to do is just use that y, ro that, uh, y rotation is a analog axis that I have bound to my vertical thrust. And I just use that, and I can make small adjustments to that uh, to kind of hold my altitude and when I mention to people that I'm trimming my thrust that's basically what I'm doing I'm just setting 
my thrust. So I don't. I'm just. I'm hands off flying right now, and I'm. I'm gaining a little bit of altitude, so I can just turn that down a little bit. And I don't want to thrust it down with my with my hats because that'll give me a burst of 100% down thruster, <laughs> and that's not what I want. And then I can use my my uh, forward and reverse thrusters to stop my forward momentum, and get myself near zero. See, I'm you go a little bit like that, and then I'm just using some more vertical thrust to get myself slowed down. You can get yourself kind of pretty much stabilized just like that. Now, the mistake a lot of people make is they're like, okay, I'm going to stick my landing gear down, and now I want to land, and so I'll just give it a little stab at down thrust, and then it's like, oh, shit! And they, you know, pile drive it in and blow up their Explorer Conda with the 2D thrusters and whatever. <laughs> it's better to just let go of the thruster. So now I'm doing this with all, uh, you know, just 100% thrusters. So I got like 100% thrust up, and as soon as I let go, I start to go down. So I got to thrust up again, and let go and thrust up again. Just like that. So having the analog on my on my Hotas, that little analog axis makes things a lot easier, a lot more stable. It's like I can dial that baby in, and then I can. I don't know if you guys can hear the crows in the background. I left the window open because it's flipping hot out, but get a little, little wildlife action. <laughs> crows are going nuts. And then you just go like that, and then trust down. And, um, excuse me. There you go. And you can see as soon as I touch down, my uh, my engine starts to spin up because I got that analog axis still engaged as my trim. So that works. So that's how I do it with uh, fly assist off in my Hodas. <laughs> uh, now I'll show the method I recommend for. people that don't fly flight assist off. As you can see on my exit, I'm still just pitching level, mostly level, and just using my vertical thrusters till I get some upward momentum, and then you can transition to to uh, flight like that. I'm gonna turn flight assist back on, because I want to show how this would be done with somebody who's just flying flight assist on. So we'll climb back up, make another approach, and uh, I'll do it with just flight assist on. And you're using the, uh, the toggle method. And this will be typically a little easier, actually. <laughs> so. I still can't do my head look like I want. I have to use my mouse. That should be enough altitude. Pull it over. That's actually... Uh, <laughs> uh, Savant, that's uh, pretty low latency. I don't know if, you, if you're used to longer latencies or not, but if it's four seconds, that's everything's looking good then. That's how I want it, low latency. Uh, so I'll pick another nice landing spot. That looks nice and flat. Just do a nice casual approach. Flight assist on this time. Yeah, something like that. So the, the ping's pretty good. I, I'd run it on a low latency for the twitch settings as well. Um, I, I prefer to be able to get back to chat as soon as possible. Um, I don't always, because sometimes I'm busy looking at you know look at looking at something in game or combat. Um, but for me, I always prefer lower latency chat, and it helps the people on mobile too, lowest lower latency as possible. Because usually I'm like, I'm usually like 12 seconds behind on mobile, and that's just how the mobile app is. A lot of times, refreshing it will help. Um, but something else I've noticed about the Twitch mobile app: if there's an interruption in the stream, it will pick up where it was interrupted, so that'll cause you even more chat latency. So a lot of times if I have like a connection interruption, like I go to some place where the Wi-Fi gets gets messed with, I'll just 
close the app and reopen it so that the latency is not as bad. But yeah, I'm a big fan of low latency. Yeah, it's it's a struggle because you don't want you know. But there's also some people that use the latency for their advantage. Like I, uh, in particular, there's this guy that used to. Well, he's, I think he still makes Call of Duty videos and puts them on the internet. Sean Hutchinson or Hutch, as many people know him. Uh, there would be times where he's like streaming a, a game battles Call of Duty game, and they're and they're like looking at his stream to figure out where he's at, and so he set it to like a five minute delay. <laughs> So like, so like, by the time the match is over, they couldn't figure out exactly where he's at. They could maybe, you know, still look at patterns of movement and, you know, what the team was saying, but uh, they couldn't see exactly where he's at, which is smart. It's using the latency. Yeah, it's stream sniping exactly. But in that case, it's like literally stream sniping because you're, you know, you're playing an FPS. All right, so flight assist is like wicked easy because the the ship will. Trim itself for you. See, look at those thrusters going. Look at those. Oh, I accidentally thrust down, and you can see I'm starting to move down. Let me go back in the in the ship. So, like a stab of vertical thruster down. Takes a little bit of time for the ship to correct that. So, what I see a lot of people doing is they'll just be coming down like this. And let's be like you know, flying in all willy nilly. See, coming down an angle like this. I watched a Crate Phantom do this at the view during uh, Distant Worlds. And they'll get going, and they'll get going, and let's be like, hey, there's all my friends and their ships, and they're doing things, and it's great. And I got full throttle, and I'm coming in, and I'm going fast, and and uh, it's about time to pull up, and then I don't thrust up, and then it's a big poop. Like that. And if you don't have enough shields, <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> Dude, I'm still on my way back as well. Uh, I made up a lot of ground this past week. Um, about 50, 60 jumps out from a white dwarf that I'm going to see. I ended up going around the, I'm going around the west side of the, the core. I got a white dwarf I'm going to, and then I got a wolf ray I'm going to go tag, and then I'm going to come back. Oh, so you're just you're still on the way to Beagle Point. Well, I mean, you got time. I think you got what is it like 18 days from now to get there? So you got time. All right, so that's the way like not to approach. And then also, I was going to demonstrate earlier. If you go sideways, your sideways thrusters cannot keep up. <laughs> so you will start dropping like a rock. <laughs> so you don't want to tilt your ship sideways. You want to keep your ship level with the ground and these thrusters still ain't going to be able to do it but it's not that bad of a boop if you're not coming down too fast you can get away with it if your shields are decent yeah i think it was a i think it was the 16th i could be wrong don't don't quote me so that's another thing you don't want to do i see people like doing this to turn they do this and they're turning and then they start dropping, and then it's like, oh shit, you know. So basically, you just want to yaw when you're on a planetary surface flight assist on, because the dang ship's thrusters can't keep up with it. <laughs> so don't do it. Otherwise, you go big boom. Oh yeah, dude, I'm only jumping like 50 with my crate phantom, so <laughs> looks like it's time for a relog, Bernard. <laughs> okay, so 16 days from now, so that's you still got time. You can make it. 71 light year jump range, yeah, you're good. You'll be fine. So that was the other thing I wanted to demonstrate. It's like, don't bank. Although you can, if you want, use that as like a falling leaf type technique. You can see how I just lost some altitude there. If you don't want to use thrusters at all, just bank a little bit. You can actually use that to kind of start coming down. See how I'm coming down nice and slow? Losing some altitude. You can watch the altitude right here. Hold on. The ship will right itself though, typically. So you gotta kinda hold it. So this is like the other technique, you can use falling leaf. Or you know like a leaf when it's um, like level doesn't fall as fast and then it kinda turns and it starts falling faster and then it goes back to level, then it turns and starts falling faster and it goes back to level. 
Now I want it to be. Now I want it to be Halloween. I just made myself sad. So that's another technique you can use other than the flight assist off. So then the last technique would be, you know, get your gear down, and then toggle flight assist off, toggle it back on, just to see how fast you descend and see how lost a lot of altitude there. It's a big, big deal. All right, let's line up on a decent landing spot here. You know, you're close enough to see the ground. Get yourself lined up good, and then you can just kind of toggle it like that. Let the ship stabilize, and you're gonna drop a lot more on a planet that's got higher gravity. And it gets annoying after a while, so I'm just gonna let it drop. <laughs> and so with that, you're just letting, you know, you're taking flight assist off. The uh, the thrusters on the bottom of the ship stop firing because uh, the flight assist isn't telling them to fire. <laughs> And you just let gravity do the work and you start dropping. Uh, I think I can do one more example of a technique that you can do in my setup. So go back up. And with my controller, since I have this Y rotation for my thrusters, I can go boop, boop, and just slowly. It's not like a full stab of vertical 100% thruster. I'm just like teeny, teeny, tiny bit of thruster right here, you can see. It's the teeniest, tiniest bit of thruster. Dial that baby down. Oops. I had it clicked off and then I stopped. All right, so I'm going to go full thruster and climb back up real quick. So that thruster technique that I use with flight assist off can work good with flight assist on as well, except you just do a teeny tiny bit of down thrust. So it's not like a full 100% stab like you get from the hat. It's just it's just the teeniest, tiniest bit of vertical down thrust. And it just comes down so smooth. Which is why if you have an analog input, my dude, Bind, bind vertical thrust to it. <laughs> Look how smooth that was. So vertical, a vertical thrust analog axis makes things so much easier. He come out like wanting to fight guard like Thargoids. Like what was he? What was he thinking, Bernard? I mean. He just wants to practice the plasma charge. <laughs> she was like, okay. He's, he's just living his life, I guess. I don't know. Just living his life. Um. So yeah, that's basically it. Now I just use hold 100% up thrust to start climbing again. Oh, does it triple your pay? Oh, yeah, because he's doing stuff too, I guess. You're doing things three times as fast. Or, yeah. I can see that. That's worth. I don't know if I'm going to head back over there. I'm still out in the Pleiades, and I have to... I'd have to haul my butt all the way over there. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um, but yeah, that's. I think that's what I wanted to cover for the planetary landings. Um, does anyone have any questions? before I go do something else with, with, with this ship. Because <laughs> I think that's that's most of the techniques that I wanted to cover. And if you follow those those top tits, I mean uh, tips, uh, then you'll be fine. You'll be great. You'll be doing good things. Uh, yep. Because it was, uh, it's, it's a little over 3G, so we were out there yesterday and you know, figure that's it's high enough G to demonstrate what I need to demonstrate. You know, 3G it's it's pretty noticeable. So that's why I figured we I just do it, do it, uh, G to. And that's why all the uh, materials and stuff are dropping towards the planets, the the high gravity. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. I was thinking could go dunk on some alliance for power play could do that 
and I'm gonna go boop and boop and take that off. And then close this guy. And now we're back to normal. Hooah. Because I did put a pole up and the the landing tutorial did win, but it just won. Hey Sadie. I'll show you. I'll, I'll go over that, Savant. I'll go over that. Let me um, get my red arrow up here. Let me get my arrow again. Uh, so right over here, this is your vertical speed indicator. And that is what you're looking at to know if you're too fast. Let's see if I just pitch down right now. So even though I'm not, see now the, uh, oh, is it going to be? No, I'm not going fast enough. Well, I got to pull up and gain more speed. Not going fast enough. So I'm just going to run at the uh, zero here and pick up a bunch of speed. But as you can see, the faster I go down, the lower that bar moves. And there's a red section of that bar. And when it gets into the red, that means you're going too fast, <laughs> vertically. Uh, so let me just, gotta get a little more speed here and get some altitude. That's about as fast as I'm going to go. This might not be fast enough, but we'll see. See how the bar is just in the red? See how the vertical speed is sitting there? I've got two little red bars right there. Oh, no. It's not going to do it. Dang it. <laughs> it slowed down enough. <laughs> so you see right at the end there, it went to... Uh, it's... Uh, went into the whoa hello I just blacked out because <laughs> I pulled up too much ouch <laughs> woof that's another thing that can happen don't don't pull up too much <laughs> try this again see if I can get it to go I just need to go a little higher so I can pick up some some more speed to dive in Excuse me, where did the arrow go? Uh, hello. I think I dragged the arrow away somewhere. I don't know where it went. I'm just going to remake the... I'm just going to remake it. It's <laughs> good. Let me just fix this. All right. There. Success. So that's what we're looking at. All right, now I've got enough altitude, uh, for sure, we can make this happen. Oops, where's my planet? Hello, there it is. Uh, it's all about vertical speed. Yeah, so it's pretty much, I think it's pretty much the same for all ships. Yes, it's not, I think it's the gravity slowing me down. I don't know what is going on. I had no problem doing this on the lower G planet. <laughs> so I'm just going to pick up as much speed as I can here. Let's see if I can dive it in. All right, it's in the red. If you're red, you're dead. See, and that one, the vertical speed indicator is in the red. You get the too fast for orbital cruise. That's 
basically the only instrument you look at. And the way you can correct for it is just to pitch up and start orbiting, basically. And I'm gonna have to wait a minute because uh, FSD's gotta cool down. Because emergency drop. And we get get lined up with my velocity vector there. Is part of that ring cut off, or is that in shadow? Yeah, that's in the shadow. Okay, I got like yeah, got confused there for a second. <laughs> So now we'll try this again, but then I'll show you the corrective action to take. Uh, let's go to the pitch to the 90. Get climbing back up. Climbing slow. Because it's a big old boy. Back in orbital cruise, the same thing happens when you're entering orbital cruise. If you're descending too fast into the orbital cruise, it'll uh, do the same thing. It's so like the blue line and the yellow line; those are the boundaries where you don't want to be going too fast vertically. So let's say you're going down too fast. I'd be too fast in the red anyway, you know, in the red pitch area. But all I gotta do is pull up. You see, that slows my vertical speed way down to nothing. And so I can just, I can orbit now. And you'll actually orbit your fastest when you're pitched to zero. And then you can reset and just head on down that way. So that's, that's the corrective action. So if you see your vertical speed indicator in the red, pull up, slow down by doing a little bit of orbiting, and then you can pitch back down and go for it again. So now, let's go dunk on some Alliance ships. <laughs> Get the, uh, turn the arrow off there. Does that make, uh, does that make sense, Savant? Actually, gonna take a minute. It's a hike. It was a hike out here, and it's gonna be a hike back. <laughs> That's why I didn't decide to go back to the bubble to do the tutorial. Because <laughs> I was kind of late getting started on this. Well, at least we got some pretty scenery <laughs> on the way back. Yeah. It looks that, that little uh, nebula thing there looks beautiful. Yeah, I didn't really check the uh, I didn't really check out the ball for uh, I didn't like take a good look at it. Like I was in there, I think, helping you guys for a minute, but uh, I didn't take like a good good look. There, I got a descanner. Might as well pick up some uh, some data. Oh yeah, I lied, Bernard. I'm actually only quad elite, because I forgot I haven't hit Explorer Elite on this account yet, because I haven't been trying. <laughs> yeah, I lied. I just like to assume because it's fairly easy to get Exploration Elite. Oh, you stop it. You weren't that close. All overheating and stuff. I got a booster on this thing too, I think. I think. I did. Maybe I don't actually. Maybe I don't have an FSD booster. 
Yeah, I think it though. But I'll get there. I'll be scooping and honking, scooping and honking, and scooping and honking. I will go drop off some for the BGS and pick up the chieftain and go dunk on some alliance fools. Some alliance NPCs. And yeah, I'm only running a four on this because it works. It's fine. I basically, to move it down here, I took off a module reinforcement and then just put one on because they had one available at Tejita. So I was like, cool. That'll make things moving this thing a lot easier that way. And then I left the Guardian one I had on there back in the bubble because this ship's got a huge power overhead and, like, I'm not using hardly any of that power plant. So I'm thinking about putting a couple uh, Guardian hull reinforcements in the smaller slots. Once I get that Guardian module reinforcement back on there, and that'll help with some caustic resistances for the Thargoids. Because right now I'm running all uh, normal hull. Uh, but I think putting two small Guardian hull reinforcements would be nice. With a little bit of resistance. Not that I get hit with it that much anyway. But you never know. Like, uh, when we were out with Suzaku, I didn't hardly pick up any caustic. It's pretty decent about staying away from it. Although I did drift into the, the big cloud at the end, which was, uh, kind of dumb. But luckily, you know, grade 5 decontamination limbit controller. Or size 5, I should say. Fixes this up right quick. And it's actually got a pretty decent repair capacity too. Yeah. Wait, what was he what was he complaining about again? The de the decon limpets. Because he was like he was ready to help, and we're like, "Yep, we we, we all got him." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 She probably could have saved herself, but you know how panic sets in and all that. And she had popped a couple of decon limp, but she might have been able to make it. But they also take time to work too, so you got to be quick about it. Four, three, two, so yeah, I think I'm going to use the chieftain over the FDL just because I like dunking on. Alliance NPCs in an alliance ship. <laughs> I don't know why I get so much joy out of that, but I do. Um, but I didn't. I'm not sure. Power play wise. Oh, this isn't a scoopable star, eh? You know why? Because I'm filtered by realistic. Because that's what I was doing yesterday. I'm not sure I got a rating. I'm close. I don't need to do it this week. I'm going to have to do it next week. But Yeah, the cost of clouds. Yeah. She flew into the one from the interceptor and, like, very quickly died. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute my, uh, my mic for a second. <laughs> my bro's got to use the printer real quick. <laughs> Say hi to the chat, Mike. What's up, chat? <laughs> Follow uh, twitch.tv slash redinstall for some great melee calls for content for JK. I don't know. He plays the best mate, the best little tier melee. <laughs> On Twitch. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna mute that while he prints the thing.
System scan complete. All right, printing is complete. No more printer noise. <laughs> My bro had to, uh, uh, he needs to return like his textbooks and stuff, so he had to like print out the shipping sheet for, uh, uh, so he could return the rental books. Yeah, I might do that, Bernard. I could just like download the VOD too and then edit it, but it's, it won't be as good quality, but it might be like okay enough quality. Um, so yeah, not sure what I'll do. I'll probably definitely, I usually upload the whole VOD, like, as is, just for reference. I don't even release most of them. Like, I just want to save them so now they're, they're somewhere I can download them off YouTube, or if someone's like, eh, something happened here, you do have the clip of it, I can, like, pull it up, even when it expires on Twitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you, you streamed for quite a while that day, so that's a lot to go through, yeah. So it's probably easier to highlight it and download that. Cause that's a big old file if that's six hours. <laughs> a big old file. I'm trying to get my bot to work. Uh, I think I did. Oh, you know what? I've used the wrong command. Uh, boom. There we go. That's my bro. If you want to go follow him on Twitch, doesn't stream often, but they did. You know, they do like, uh, like they went down to uh, Fight Pit in Pittsburgh as a Smash Brothers Melee tournament. And they were uh, streaming their warm up games from that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, twelve gigs with the VOD. Holy crap! This. Man, so much, so much action going on outside. With trucks and stuff. This is a busy day. Oh, I'm gonna take a quick break. After I get this going. There we go. Be right back.
Oh, on scene. There it is. <laughs> uh, where am I headed? I'm headed back to Hilla. And then I'm going to go to an alliance controlled system and dunk on some NPCs. And then maybe season some alliance fools and open and dunk on them. I don't know. We'll see. Just going to do some power play stuff because I'm feeling power play. So 12 jumps, I need to be skimming a little bit more aggressively. A little bit more aggressively. I don't know. They're, they're, I just decided that's going to be my role play. <laughs> and like we got uh, an alliance faction that are like not super great neighbors. So uh, yeah, alliance player faction that's a rival player faction and so I decided okay I'm just gonna dunk on alliance ships and in, in an alliance ship yeah makes it fun they're so high and mighty and think they're the they're so like uh, uh, what's what would be the word uh, I'll just like they're like the moral high ground of the galaxy and they're not they're no better than anyone else Uh, maybe? What, who, uh, who did it? When, when, when was that? I might, I might have missed it, because I didn't, I wasn't there for, for his whole streams. I've been kind of, like, real life busy. Oh, so you got, like, you got, like, you got, like, gang banged? <laughs> That's super cool. It's like, good job, lads. <laughs> of course, a cutter. Uh, of course. Were you guys out in the um, uh, conflict zones? Ah, this is all CZ. So he's in the Corvette, and they switch to the Phantom just because he's always broke and can't can't afford the rebuys, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I had Jet Cam Boost turned on. Oh well. Gotcha. Well, I mean, sound like fun. I wish I was there. Oh, they picked the same side and then they turned on you. Is that none of the other ships just, like start shooting them and stuff? Is that the idea? That's pretty cheeky. That's a M class. I can scoop off of that. That'll be good. I'll fill up the tank. Yeah, that's the big advantage of the Vulture. Oh, I believe that too. The Vulture has, because of like the small size and the, how big of a generator you can stick in there, it has great shields. Even bi-weaves, you can get like pretty high-capped bi-weaves. Um, but I went for the opposite on my Chieftain. Um, I used to have it reinforced, um, but I found that I think it ends up working out going with the big resistance by the resistance by weave and then uh, having the two chaff um, and especially those fights that we were doing um, at at uh, out at the uh, the CG uh, with those guys where a lot of them were using gimbal stuff uh, that kept me way way safe um, won't do much good against someone who's actually like good or like a, like a Dutchman build would probably explode it. Um, just bust through those shields and then cross the heck out of the hull because it doesn't have a huge hull either. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely use a big help against gimbaled weapons and that's kind of why I use this as my PBE. 
because most uh, NPCs are going to be using turreted or gimbaled. So it's a PvE ship that um, I'm willing to tango with people PvP if it just happens to happen. Yeah, I am planning the same thing when I get back. I made a lot of jumps the past couple days to get my main account back. I'm about 50, 60 jumps away from the, the white dwarf I'm heading to. Uh, and then I'll head to a Wolf Rayet, and then I'll head to Colonia and make sure I got the correct recipes pinned, and then I'm going to buckyball it back from Colonia. So it shouldn't be... I'm hoping I'll be back in like two, three weeks. Like I got another round of chemo coming uh, next week. This is my off week, so this is you know good time to like do streaming and stuff like that. Because uh, I'm feeling like normal now, <laughs> but I'm like wicked tired during a chemo week, so I might not make a lot of progress. Yay, normal week. Yeah. So huge and large phasing efficient PAs and large and small phasing long range burst. See, I'm thinking about. I have a huge phasing PA just lying around. I'm going to smack that in the middle. And then the rest of it's going to be phasing pulses. F phasing gimbal pulses for, for ease. Just be like the trolliest, easiest build. Um, not sure what I'm going to do for the mod. Maybe efficient? I don't know. I don't know if I should go fishing or long range or like rapid fire or oversized. I don't know what I should do. Or I mean, no, not oversized. I mean, overcharge. Oversized is like experimental. Um, yeah. I had my Mamba set up with. Um two APAs just to try that out uh, that was before target light breaker got nerfed I think uh, so I did it with two APAs and a huge multi small multi and a small feed feedback cascade rail and that was a pretty decent build but the thing is it only worked good against big ships because the the convergence on the PAs kind of sucked like I think it's I don't know if it's worse than a phantom but it felt like it I don't, I don't know it was weird. I didn't. I didn't particularly like it. So that's how I'm thinking. I'll just gimbal all the small stuff with pulses and phasing uh, PA on the huge, and that'll be like pretty easy cheesy anti-ganker build, anti-shield tank build, whatever. Like we're doing, that'll be that'll be funny. Should be should be a good time. Because the gimbals will give me enough, like, just consistent damage, and I can just focus on landing the PA shots. Which would do the big, big boy damage. But yeah, should be a good time. Should be a good time. Because I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the Mamba. Because, like, I engineered it, and, like, kind of like the FDL better. But this build will probably give it give it new life for me. And it should be a pretty okay PvE build too, so I could use it for BGS and you know. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be great. I like that idea. Hopefully I'll I'll make this account back in the next couple weeks. And then every everything will be all all right in the world again. Gotta get this account back, and I gotta dump all my data. I'm gonna try to unlock as many permits as possible. I'm basically doing what Bog's been doing. <laughs> but I was doing it before Bog was doing it. <laughs> I was doing it before uh, uh, I even left for Distant Worlds. I got the Sublime Order of Ben, Man, and Star, and uh, I think I got a few more. I have most of the permits on this on uh, my main account, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to do a bunch for BGS as well. Uh, speaking of that, thank you for reminding me, because... Uh, what is player administration going to do? Elite? Yes, play Elite player. There you go, good boy. Player's doing a poll for where he's going to stream later. Uh, I need to actually contribute to her flipping BGS because I haven't been doing much lately. I've been trying to jump my ship to get back. 
Uh, where do we need exploration data? Probably gonna be a small chunk, so I'm gonna go to HIP. There we go, go there first. Engineered so they wouldn't have to worry about the what? So they, they bought the, they engineered the Freewinder? Wait, what? Because all the modules are alone, but you engineer them? Is that what you're saying? Oh my god. That's flipping brilliant. <laughs> That's flippin' brilliant. Oh god. I like that. I don't have my free binder anymore. I don't know, maybe I do. Yeah, actually I think I do, but I don't have all the free modules on it. So that's the thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm debating between long range and efficient. But the thing is like with this mom build, I'm gonna wanna be hitting people up close. So I'm thinking like Maybe overcharge would be better. Overcharge or efficient? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I, I didn't. I didn't say it because I wasn't sure if that was true or not. But yeah, just like suicide and get a free one. Yeah. Like select to not buy, rebuy the ship basically, and you get your free winder. I figured that's how it worked. Yeah, that's just deciding on which uh, which mod to use. I do like the fact that there's, I think that the no damage drop off is like a super big advantage with lasers. Um, I don't know. I'll just I'll I'll compare some different graphs in Coriolis and figure out what I think would be best. Long range phasing, but the thing I'm running gimbal, so I don't know. I think it would still be worth it. Because, I mean, gimbals are still going to be hitting a big ship at three kilometers, you know? Like, no problem. I don't know. It'll probably be fine. Yeah, that's the same. Like, if I can stick around at, like, three kilometers and avoid, like big weapons you know we got people that like to, to kite as well so having the long range works good for that you know we can keep up and they can try to reverse ski and we can just keep hitting them so I guess that's an advantage so I think yeah I think long range is gonna be it it's gonna be it. I probably have some sitting around too. I might have some long range bursts, small bursts sitting around. Maybe I'll go with some bursts. And I'm gonna overshoot because I'm super good at this game. There we go. That's better. Good old Cardano Vision. Done a lot of BGS out of here. Not even sure what the main strategy is right now. I'm honestly like, I haven't been the best squadron member doing BGS as of late. I'm gonna try to make, make change that. Uh, we don't, yeah, low priority conflict zones, but I think I'd rather do a little bit of power play action just for funsies uh, what I've found is um, for power play I'm gonna test it out just to be double sure uh, so I'll test it out today but it seems like you don't pick up a system bounty as long as it's a power play kill you'll pick up a bounty with the power play faction but you don't become like locked out from the stations I believe but I'll test that and you don't gain notoriety, I believe, either. Like, even if it's in a, a lawful um, state. 
Yeah. See, I didn't I didn't realize that. And people are like, oh, yeah, you got to do power play in an anarchy system. And it's like, you don't really need to do it in an anarchy system. <laughs> Yeah. And that makes it good so that you could, uh, you know, fight another player even if they got crimes on and not have to deal with crap, I believe. If they're from a different, you know, doing power play stuff. So that's, uh. That's a coup, I like it. And that crate flies so, it's got such good manners. Flies very nice. Even this one that's kind of loaded down. Oh, you know what? You know what? Lost some jump range because of the limpets. Smarty pants, look at me go. Yeah, dude. After being stuck in one thing, I'm so glad I have this alt account. Like, <laughs> I would have gone nuts, dude. I would have gone nuts, Sadie. I probably would have buckyballed it back if I didn't have this alt account. What was I doing here? Oh yeah, Universal Cards. Uh, we'll sell the good ones. So okay, that's 900k total. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I put a lot of time in before Distant Worlds. Yeah, well the thing is that that's where I would have done something different, like not in Aspects. I'm a big fan of the Cobra for beginners. I tell people like, yo, get in the Cobra for a minute. Because it's a good multi-roller. Have some fun in that. All right, that's good enough. And go ahead and make my reports. Oh, I remember that. Yep, I remember that now. That that is a good. Yeah, that's a good good point there. Because that would have been a pain if you didn't have the jump range for that. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I'm not gonna like plot it with Spanch or anything. I'm just gonna like do whatever. But I'm definitely gonna bucky ball back from Colonia because it's a pretty well traveled path. So I'm gonna bucky ball, but. Um, I'm just gonna like check the uh, FSS real quick for like signal sources basically you know so if like if I find like a notable stellar phenomenon or something I will stop for that or if like I find Raxla I'll stop for that <laughs> you know because <laughs> it's it's very easy to pick off uh, signal sources you know Yeah, I just kind of like plot and go. I don't know. Like, I know where I want to go, plot it, let the plotter do the thing. Oh man, you're never going to find it, Bernard. It's going to be, you might as well have dropped it in a black hole, dude. You're never going to, you're never going to move that soap to thing behind it. It's going to be back there for good. Yeah, like uh, the plot I'm taking right now is very much near the middle of the galactic plane, I think, and so I'm hitting more neutrons. And the star density is better because I was trying to cut through a, a pretty uh, sparsely populated area, but now I'm getting into like the stars are starting to getting into the spiral of where I'm at, like getting into the arm. <laughs> Suck those to the wash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot. I think I'm in player's journey. I think it's in player's turn. Cool. The stutter in jumping? Wait, what do you what do you mean? I'm not sure what you're referring to. There's something wrong with jumping out of Sage? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go back to Explorer's Anchorage. I think I'm going to hit Colonia. I don't know, Bernard. People are freaking dumb, dude. People are dumb. Uh, 
Yeah, some people just don't care. Some people don't. It's like some people don't care about playing the game optimally. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Is it because of the skybox? Or have they not pinned down what's causing it? Huh. Yeah, I you know what really you know what really uh, irks me, what grinds my gears? When people tell you to go all the way over here for wing beacon. Look how long that took me to do. Boom, wing beacon, it's in here. You just go to this, and you click options under your wing, and you activate wing beacon. It's where it always has been. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's been in the game for a while, the stuttering. Because I guess, I don't know, maybe I didn't notice it. Oh, I could have just, maybe I just wasn't noticing it when I was out there. Because I did go right through the core to hit a wolf ray it. Huh. So they don't, you don't even know if they're, we don't even know if they're working on fixing it or not. Well, I mean, I'm getting frame loss flying on plants anyway. <laughs> I think I need to um, change my uh, graphics settings again because I, every once in a while, like, you know, my computer, I told you, it does that blue screen thing. It likes to reset all of Elite's graphics settings for some reason. It's all losing, all losing frames. Where's 30? Oh, there's 30. Hello. That, and I just need to upgrade to like a 2080 at some point. I don't know. My 970 is still, still doing fine, but it struggles with VR, and it's sad. It's sad. I still haven't freaking... Sadie, I still haven't freaking done the mods for Beat Saber. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, my GPU is pretty stout, actually. It's My GPU is no problem. It's definitely not the bottleneck. It's a six core, it's like three gigs per core. And I saw you guys, I saw you and AO playing last night, so I was, I was like, oh yeah, they're doing that. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm playing Honey Pop, like a true intellectual. Uh, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, shipyard. I need to get my Alliance dunking ship, which is an Alliance chieftain. <laughs> Oh, so they have like a big update, like a big UI update, or is it like uh like an update to how the scoring works? Because I noticed what you're saying, like the more centered you, uh, like timing's a thing, and then center of the the cube is a thing. So I remember that I was actually able to clear clear um one of the default songs one handed, it with like a B, like a B a pass it with like a B rating, which I was super proud of. Um, but I haven't played it in like a month or so. But uh, my right arm's back to pretty much full health, so I think I can give it a go now. Uh, left arm, still not, nah, not going to happen. Not going to happen for a while. All right, so I think I know where I want to go. I'm assuming I got my fuel scoop on this thing. I'm assuming I have all the weapons because I basically just buckyballed this back from the, the community goal. Uh, where is the control system? Controlled in Leasty. So let's go to Leasty and just like see who's hanging out in Leasty. The last frame before it wasn't counted for swing angle, which is part of the scoring. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, see, I haven't figured out the angle part yet, I think. I'm just like trying to clear the goddamn songs at this point. <laughs> I'm not at that I'm not at that experience level yet. Yeah, sometimes I think me and Alien Hunter dunked on this one guy in a killback, because we didn't I didn't like the name of his killback. So I'm like, let's dunk on this guy. We were in our Eagles. And after dunking on him twice, we're just like, I feel bad for this guy. He's just freaking dumb. <laughs> oh, so that now the now like all the records are gonna start going up because the new scoring is uh, the meta.
or they had to like fine tune it so that it would allow that. Because because yeah, you wouldn't want that to like have the old scoring, and the like, records could never be broken. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be fun. You have to make an adjustment. Oh, look at that. That's a huge fuel scoop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's one way to get people to keep playing your game. <laughs> keep the player base up. I mean, that works, I suppose. I was looking at mine and I'm like, that one song I was able to, to clear, I'm like 100,000 points off from the, the leader at the top. And I'm like, holy crap. It's like, how do? Uh, Beat Saber, Bernard. Yeah, dude. Even like, I remember Scorb and Plater and Machine and Turgeon, I think were kind of, they're pretty competitive of it. Um, lately, or when it when it first came out, they're pretty competitive of it. All right, sweet and leasty. We gonna find some dudes to dunk on. Some Edmund Mahone dudes. Nope, that's not who I want. That's not who I want. And I'm probably going to dunk on a few of these guys and then call it. But we'll see. Because dunking on NPCs does get old after a while. Nope. Now I'm looking for... Ooh, is that one? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Come to me, little fishy. Your card is about to be well and truly punched. So, if I'm correct, this won't count as a murder and I won't get notoriety for it. on them, see if they drop anything good. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, I could use some heat exchangers. I think I'll pick up the heat exchangers. Uh, I'll pick up the heat exchangers real quick. Uh, come on. And that should net me 30 pointsies, and then I gotta go turn that in like a bounty, basically. So I got uh, 30 power play, and then I got bounty with Edmund Mahone. And as you can see, I'm hostile, but I'm not wanted. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, negative sag. Mahone. Mahone. Dunking on the Alliance and Alliance ship is my job now. Greetings, stranger. What are you buying? What are you selling? Anyone, anyone get that that video game reference? Yay, nay. And that is not what I'm looking for. That's uh, Resident Evil 4. Yeah, Resident Evil 4, the merchant. 
That was a great game. I played the heck out of that game on the GameCube. Back when online play wasn't really a th much of a thing. Serious security. I wonder if I dunk on serious security. It'll count. They're wanted. So I have no risk of engaging, but... I never played Pikmin, actually. <laughs> Pikmin was one of those games I never I never picked up. I was big on, like, the... I played the Rogue Squadron games and Zeldas and Resident Evil 4. And that was, like, about it. Oh, the Robotech game, which is now, like, I can't even look at that anymore. Because, my god, the flight model is <laughs> absolutely horrible. After I started flying, I'm like, I can't play this game anymore. I can't do it. Can't do it, dude. Come to me, little fishy. shift drive. Yeah, especially against NPCs, because they generally don't have a strong shield as players, so they just tear right through them. And if you get ships like this, you know, like, people say, oh, why do you do a long-range mod? It's like, because I can still hit stuff with it, and it's better than not doing any damage. It's not the optimal damage dealing mod, but you can still hit stuff at 2km. You know? That's, so that's why I go for the long-range mod. Ooh, compound shielding. I will take me some of that. Yeah, that's my uh, my chip damage build is what I call it, because it, it does chip damage. Wait, are you pledged to Mahone? Or are you pledged to, uh, oh, for the Cytos? Yeah, Cytos and Multicannons, because it's, it's easy. It's an easy build. Yeah. Um... I'm currently pledged to... What's the guy? What's the uh, Imperial guy with, like, the nice goatee? Uh, Denton Patrius? Petraeus? Patrius? Petraeus? And yeah, Rogue, Rogue Squadron was very good. It's still a very arcadey uh, flight model, but it's Star Wars who gives a chainsaw. I'm not, I'm not going to be picky when it comes to Star Wars. Because, I mean, all of Star Wars is pretty arcadey looking. Yeah, I tried frags on this. I tried that build. I'm not a big... I'm not a frag man. I don't know. Like, I can do it, but... I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll get... Um, I was thinking about maybe getting the pacifiers, and that might make, make me like them better. And throw a couple pacifiers on this thing. Oh, so you did it on the Challenger, too. Okay, so a little bit different, because you have more uh, hard points, right? I believe. So that didn't net me any uh, uh, power play stuff, because it was not the right power, but I just wanted to test that out. Okay, so you're using double shot. Okay. I don't see. Maybe I wasn't using the right mod. It's like they do okay, but I just didn't really like them. I don't know. I just I think I just need to practice with them more, maybe. Oh, hi, Baze. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Big, better against big ships, too. I was also going after a bunch of small ships. Oh, this guy's in a wing. This will be perfect. Get three for the price of one interdiction if I can catch up with him. <laughs> I know, dude. That, like, how? There's a question. I had a question for you with the mouse thing. If you like bump your mouse, does that like affect your? Um, does that like affect your aim? Because you, you're telling the stick to respond as a mouse. I don't know. Yeah, 
yeah, the weakness of this build is chaff, but um, to be honest, I just wanted to be able to get shields down quick for others to be able to hit stuff. And your FSDs are booted. Get lit up. And the Cytos still work pretty good against small ships. See, it just, it's a really good PvE ship, the combo of the weapons. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm doing okay without curves. Because I really got to kind of keep these these uh, Cytos kind of stable. I'm doing a lot more thrusting to adjust my aim finally, instead of like yaw. And I'm just using very like small yaw inputs. Alright, I need to slow this down so this guy cannot be jousting with me. Yeah, my pit management is like kind of shitty. Uh, excuse me. I need your shields, please. Give me your shields, thank you. Boom, baby. Alright, let's see. I don't think they're going to have anything good. Nah, nothing I really want to stick around for. I do want to maybe give what you're saying a try, though. I think what... The reason I got rid of the software was just, it was causing problems for me, but I wasn't 100% sure. But I mean, I could just try installing the X52 software again and see how it works. Ooh, what do we got here? Yay, Alliance Enforcer. Make sure I get the full scan off just for good habits. Good habit forming. And boom, babe. What are you using for your pips base? Are you just got macros going or oh wow that was a I guess that's effective way to do it. <laughs> okay, so you just like you hit left and it goes. So you don't have to keep tapping it like I do. I might try that. That could be a thing. Yeah, he sort of flew into me. But I mean that's fine to me. Oh, are there macros on the X fifty two software? I didn't even like check to see if there was or, or not. Ah, uh, the modal, yeah. Yeah, because that's really the only way the mode dial does anything, is changing changing uh, profiles, basically. There's like three profiles. So I, I should maybe dive back into that now that I've had, like, you know, more education on... on uh, controls, controller setups and stuff. Maybe I can find a use for it. That is not going to be what I'm looking for. Alright, i got a decent amount of power play. I think I'll grab one more and then go cash this in. And that's not what I'm looking for. But you know what? One more and I'll cash it in. Ayo, Pyro. How's it going? And are you a power play ship? Uh, I don't know if you could. 
don't I don't know if you could. Or you mean like the mouse as the joystick mode, maybe? Probably? That could be a thing. Oh, okay. Alright. You'd be in a fesh fesh Alright, well this guy's gonna be dumb. And he's gonna wanna just interdict me, so I'm just gonna do this on him. It's like, could you not, maybe? I know, I know it's facetious, but I'm just like, I was being, I was being silly. All right, come on, just freaking interdict me, you piece of garbage. There you go. Welcome to my trap. Poor pit management there. Oh, you going? Have a good one, Pyro. Thanks for stopping by. Come on, get him. Come on, get him. Thank you. I almost did a did a dumb where <laughs> I didn't have any pips into pips or anything. Okay, so yeah, if it can change it with a mode, I could like make mode one normal and mode three do that. Maybe I might give it a try. It could be a thing. I don't know. Alrighty then, let's see. Uh, power play. I think I just have to drop it off at a control system, All right? What's the, I forget what the target means. Is that a good place to drop it off? I'm just gonna go there. That's not too many jumps. I might keep this uh, Denton guy as my main, as my main dude um, after I get it, because it's pretty close to Ploid Space. Uh, there's the advanced plasma accelerators. So that's what, that's what, that's what uh, Petraeus is good for. But the Cytos are like situationally good. Yeah, the those are also situationally good. Like if I was gonna make like a full DACA chieftain, I'd throw um I'd throw one on. Ooh, what do we got here? What have we here? <laughs> ah, they're clean. Okay. I was gonna say if they were a dirty ship, I was gonna, I was gonna jump them. Or you know, the alliance could just be all mayo at me. <laughs> ah, I don't know why it does that screen shake thing. It's so weird. And a boot. We outie. And I think 
Yeah, the nice thing about doing it in a medium ship is I don't really have to worry about whether or not there's large pads. So that's another reason why I like doing this in the Chieftain. It's got decent jump range. I just like threw a, uh, a 1H FSD booster on here. It really helps the range just that little extra bit. Uh, let's see what we got. I see, like that's that's not too bad of a jump range for a combat ship. It's got decent hull, good shields for doing PVE stuff. I'm like a big fan, and it helps me with my aiming too because it's very twitchy, uh, and it forces me to be very um, smooth. Like um, the laser work I was doing there it was probably some of the better laser work that I've done with this ship. Just trying to learn to make very, 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 very small inputs on the stick. Uh, specifically in the yaw axis, because that can. This thing yaw is like pretty dang good. Uh, so that's something I've been working on. Actually, to help train me, um, Baze, if you notice, there's a, a uh, locking mechanism for the twist. And I locked it and you could still kind of move it just a little bit you know uh, 37,000 light seconds well give me time to explain this so you can still move it a little bit and that was enough to get good find aiming in the uh, the chieftain um, select for like super cruise and stuff but uh, for flight assist off you know fine-tuning aiming it was like perfect and it just got me um, used to not stabbing like huge amounts of, of uh, yaw so that was like a good uh, good training exercise that I did, and I have it unlocked now, um, but that kind of like the muscle memory for how much to twist it is still there. So I don't know if that would help you out or not. Um, that twist lock is also good for people that are using um, rudder pedals, because then you can just keep the stick stationary if you want, if you prefer it that way. Um, it's always nice to be able to have that option. Um, but I do think that my twist spring might be going bad, but I don't know, it's a little clicky at the full locks. I'm not sure if it's going to go bad or not, but I mean, I got the replacement parts. Oh, all you do is it's it's, it's down the, uh, the left side where it says the, the logo, and you just pull it out, and it just prevents you from twisting it, basically. It's like a friction lock, basically. I believe. It could be an actual physical lock too. Actually, yeah, I think it's a physical lock, but it still gives you like, see right now I can still move it a little bit. So it helps you with your fine tuning of the yaw if you're like using practice and rails or something. And then you can get used to that, uh, that muscle memory. Um, did you decide to use the pinky for modifiers or did you, are you gonna be using something else? I was curious to see what you went with. Wonder if he's gonna try to come get me. I just want to get my my stuff turned in, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's like it's a good button. It's out of the way. It keeps your other fingers freed up for other things. Oh, look, he's gonna try to come get me, guys. Maybe. Come on, pop it. Actually, I'll keep going. Let's see if he. I think he can grab me now. There we go. Perfect. See if I get some more points for this guy. are so easy to hit with Cytos. The first kill I got with this ship was against a crate. Uh, of course back then I was also running pack hounds. <laughs> but still, it was like it was like no contest. It was in one of the late wars. It was hilarious.
Oops, a little too far away. Baby, easy peasy. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. I accidentally hit the pinky button while I was trying to steal my hard points and that uh, switches modes. Hashtag modifiers. Yep, but I do very much enjoy this build. Uh, I think I might put this build back in my builds list on the channel. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do that or not, because I was still kind of like experimenting with it. But I think it's to the point now where I'm comfortable with, or with where to refine it. I'm not going to make any more like huge changes, so I'm probably going to add that back to the build list if it's not already there. I don't think it's there. Because uh, my old one had the high cap shields with a booster, not, not uh, yeah, had a three booster set up, I think. Actually, no, it was a two booster with a heat sink and a chaff. This one's two booster with double chaff, no shield cell banks. Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm just doing, just doing streamy stuff. I'm actually almost done. We're going to drop into, um, in here, and... And, um, and yeah, we'll go, uh, go say hi to someone after, so stick around for a little bit. But on the way, we can see if we can pick off a couple more. I think I still get, I think I still, yeah, I gained, I gained some. Yep, I gained some. I gained, uh, 30, I believe, for that. Because I think I had 150 before I left uh, Alliance Space. Of course, I could be wrong, actually. Because <laughs> I should have gained 60 from that. I don't know. Look at me, not paying attention as usual. What else is new? At least I'm paying attention to where the mail slot is. So, there's that. So if I can make my approach easy, I will. Um, it's that thing you do that you, you have to you have to you have to pay it. It's like a it's like a brain tax. And if you don't pay it, you do dumb stuff. Dude, that's all good, Alien Hunter. That's a good time. I'm not. I I got a buddy who's really big into Warframe, but I don't know if like the shooter life is for me. I was thinking about maybe trying it, but I don't know. Not not too into loot shooters. There is this um this other game that maybe a couple buddies wanted to start playing. It's like a free-to-play Monster Hunter. Like it's got like Fortnite graphics, but it's like Monster Hunter. It's like. I got some. I got a buddy who might be playing it on PlayStation, and he's like, "Yeah, it's got crossplay. We could play together." I'm like, "Yeah, cool." Because that's something I kind of miss with some of my friends. Like, I moved to PC, and I still got friends that play mostly console. It's like that's a big seller. Like, even if I don't end up liking the game, it's nice to be able to like play with some of my friends that are on console. That's why Rocket League's so great. It's like I love it when we get to we get to play with like like RK and Pyro. I think that's pretty cool. Please more crossplay. Charlie Romeo, India. We're happy to have you, Commander. Priority access will be granted upon request. I should do a flip real quick. I should do a flip. I'm gonna do a flip. This ship's gonna be easy to do a flip. Look at that. Look at that pitch control. That's just that's just stupid. 
yeah, I, I think a crossplay would be fine. And people are like, oh, people wouldn't be able to keep up. And it's like, I don't know, there's people that play with controllers on PC. And, you know, it's better to be able to play with people. And if they, you know, maybe they don't compete as well with the keyboard and mouse people do in PvP, but you still get to play with them. You know, you still get to do stuff. It'd be great, you know? But there's a lot of, like... You know, you've got to talk to Sony and Microsoft and get them on board with it. And it's probably, you know, there's so much other stuff they got to be dealing with at this point anyway. That, uh, you know, it's probably not high on the list. What am I doing? Compact, I want power contact. Duh! Uh, yeah, I got vouchers for Leasty. Get boned, Leasty. <laughs> All right, so what am I looking at now? That's pretty good. I mean, I'm going to lose half these at the end of the week, so I'm not, like, going super hard on them, but it'll be something. I'll be contributing. Yeah, so we got 45 merits from last week, got 244 merits. I'll keep half of that, and that'll be just that little bit less that I don't have to do. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can't, don't, don't the, um, oh, hey, Crow. I don't like um, console players that can use EDSM. Like, there's an EDSM for Xbox. Or not uh, EDSM. Well, it, it connects to EDSM, but it's Elite, uh, EDMC. I believe you can run that off of Xbox now. I don't know about PlayStation. Like, there's a little bit to do. There's a little bit doing with it to get it set up and working right. But it's doable, so that's nice. And, I mean, they can still all use the websites, so that's nice. Like, my first player group was an Xbox group, and they're like, hey, guys, if you're on the PC, could you be running Elite Dangerous Market Connector to help us out? Thank you. You know, because we were out on, like, the uh, west side of the bubble. You know, not much going on out there in that in that group. Ooh. I mean, I got the 14, so I'm good. Like, I got a good, good movie maker thing. I think I might pass on it, save the money for something else. It's, I haven't been producing many videos lately, and the, the software I got is adequate for my needs. Um, oh, I haven't, I haven't even heard of that one, but yeah, uh, I think it's Vegas Pro. F I don't know if it's 15 or 14. Hold on, I can check the one I got, but it's it's pretty nice. I like it. Uh, the shortcut should be there, but I'm looking at it through a folder, so I'm not like looking at it where it is on the desktop, and I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, where are you? I know you're there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm a dumb and I can't find it. <laughs> oh, it's a Linux thing, or Linux. Linux, Linux. Here he comes, tougher than the rest of them. Knuckles, yeah, okay. All right, well, it's about that time. Uh, I need to go get like a food in me. And it's about that time that we need to go visit somebody. So I'm gonna see who's on. I think I already know who I want to raid. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go say hi to Plater. And we're gonna do it right this time. We're gonna do it right this time. I remembered it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and copy that raid text, and I'll follow you guys in and do my response, and it'll be funny. Um, so yeah, thanks uh, everyone for coming and hanging out and interacting with the tutorial. That was a good turnout. I'll uh, upload that VOD to YouTube uh, in about 24 hours once the uh, the embargo has been lifted. Uh, and you can review that as you see fit. So uh, I've been Tater Chip. You've been lovely. Until next time, have a good one. Keep the dirty side down.
Thanks for watching.